I, I was signing the how my deed to my house, watching the towers get hit. Um, oh, really? Yeah, on September 11th. So the deed to my house, when we were signing the paperwork down there, the towers got hit. And um, I looked at Gina, I'm like, I think you're going to be moving in by yourself, maybe. I don't I don't know how this is <laughs> going to affect us or whatever. But And then you guys left. I think we just met for a little bit. And then yeah. you took off. And then I, I came there in October um, with you yeah. guys out there on Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. So I was at I was at Benning for a very short period of time before I deployed. Like I said, you got there right. At, I mean, depending how you look at it, either the best time or the absolute worst time. Uh, I mean, Family wise, I think it was not so time. good. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know Korea, he was yeah. over in Korea. Like son of a. <laughs> <He's> gonna... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and I when I talked to him, uh, I sat down. Like he was on here too, and I mm-hmm. I had forgotten that he left and came back. Uh, yeah. He went to Korea and then came back. Uh, well, that's why I told him, like, really... dude, you talked me into saying that we'd be stationed together again and everything, and then you leave. <laughs> like, how do you? How does that work out? He's like, well, I'm coming back. I'm like, all right, well, you're the one that got me here. And then you're like, yeah, peace out, brother. I'm out. <laughs> you're right. So, um, but yeah, that started my deployments. Um, all of our, as everyone in the unit that started our deployments over to uh, Afghanistan and led into Iraq and everything. So um, yeah. multiple, multiple times to Afghanistan, multiple times to Iraq and stuff too. So that was, you know, it was, um, it was almost like a blur as you probably same, you know, yeah. like you come home, you're not really home. You're getting ready to, you're doing a JRX, you're doing whatever you're doing this. And then you're gone again, you know? So I, yeah. it just became the norm and I, I truly loved it. I, I did. I, I loved it. It was same here. Um, one of those things that a lot of people, you know, wish they got to do and they never got to do. And, you know, it was, uh, it was good and bad, I guess I should say. So, cause I lost some friends yeah, yeah. that. So, but um yeah so i did a uh, deployment over there the first one was with you oman we went into afghanistan then i replaced you over in uh when we were over there um oh yeah i forgot about that yeah, yeah. yeah it was interesting because torbora was going on and when i was over when after i replaced you torbora happened and they were right. they're wanting to launch us from to go in there and they just they never did because they wanted the um the northern alliance guys to get them so yeah but we were like we can hit the back side of it and we had a whole you know as you know we had a whole company over there and uh right right um but i came back from that deployment i think that's when i took over aco from you and you went is that when you went up to rd or yeah yeah yep it's um that was around i think oh two or oh three i think oh two i deployed with second battalion and then and then when i got back from that one i went to recce okay so yeah around that time so yeah i think but to your point, yeah, you took over ACO mm-hmm. once I come back from that first deployment. Yeah, because right? I deployed with yeah. them in O2 at Asadabad uh, out there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Dean was talking about you. He mentioned your name a couple times during his he's episode. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, yeah, um, he's an all. I, I couldn't believe he cross trained. Uh, I know. Like, I didn't, I can't believe he did that. So, it was crazy. Yeah. I know. I got to watch that episode with him. So, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah and he, we, everybody was trying to get him to, back to the Rangers, and he was like, you know what? I've been there, done that. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me just be a t- conventional tech B for a while and see how that works. And he crushed at that, man. He was really, yeah, so yeah. He did well in the Ranger um, competition, I think, too. Like I, when he was, I think they, he was. In- yeah, yeah, he, that's right. He went to best Ranger. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 But uh, that was interesting seeing him with a, with a um, black beret on <laughs> instead of a tan one. He was, he's an <laughs> right. awesome fire support guy, though. He was, I, I would yeah. say, one of the best ones I worked with. And I, there's a lot, oh, there sure. was a lot of them there in third bat and the regiment and everything, too. So um, I, I'm not just singling him out, but just because I worked with him the most because um, yeah. he was at ACO. Um, and he was phenomenal. Really, I couldn't say more good things about him and everything. So, well, he he was real fortunate, and you're right. Every all the companies were great. I mean, mm-hmm. there was like there were great FSNCOs at each company, but Morris was just a wealth of knowledge. He was like a, a, a just a yeah. rock star of fire support. So that he had him, Mitch Emery was there. He yeah, was, was also awesome. another yeah. stellar troop, mm-hmm. just awesome dude. So yeah, the ACO guys were kind of they had a, an, an in kind of, like I said, every company had their great FSNCOs, but you and I were at ACO. So we know that yeah. these two guys in particular were just phenomenal. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. So tell me about, uh, ABAT. tell me about that, uh, first deployment with those guys. So that was, um, that was my first airstrike ever as, All right on. It. so it was, we, um, <laughs> I was going to the bathroom 
at night reading a letter and RPG comes in and it's the back wall. And I'm like, whoosh. And I'm, flying. I'm like, no way. I'm like, I cannot die on the shitter. <laughs> like, <I can't. laughs> this is terrible. Like, I can't go out like this. <laughs> so, I mean, I was scared but pissed. <laughs> like, so, oh, yeah. With a tank top on, shorts. So, my first airstrike was with tank with a tank top and shorts on um, and a helmet with, and, and Q and another, and another CCT guy was there um with another unit and they were lazing the targets for me and stuff and i was calling and that was my first airstrike and stuff that they did so um that, nice. I, that I ever did in uh in country which was it was interesting so um and it was uh we're probably almost every night we take some type of indirect fire you know uh, yeah. mortars or rpgs or small arms or whatever um we did a lot of patrols we did a <laughs> we cleared this whole valley um, which was a death march. I'm not sure we we're looking for uh, this one HVT guy that I don't think he's ever been caught. Um, but we we're looking for him down this valley, and it was probably a 26 mile in, 26 mile out. It was, it was. And you guys walked the whole way. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Walked, they, and we had another company come over, and they, I think it was Bico or I can't remember if it was Bico or Seco, but they did the other side. So it was, it was two companies and they cleared one side, we cleared the other and all the way down. Um, and that was, that was brutal going through those, those mountains and stuff and on those oh, trails. And, uh, Q came out cause we needed, um, more, we had Hank house, myself, Foster, and then Q came out and, uh, geez, you guys are all there. Yeah, we had, we had, that's how much stuff, that's how much had stuff we had going on. Um, wow. so we had a JTAC per team per, per platoon. And, uh, I worked with, um, Aaron Bordeaux's platoon a, a lot, but most that's, I would, that's actually the only one I really worked with. And, uh, yeah, yeah. another good guy. Yeah. He's like, I, I still keep in con- contact with him when I go down to, to uh, Knoxville and stuff. And oh, okay. with him. yeah. And then, um, so yeah, we, we, we were busy, um, doing patrols every day, doing whatever. Um, and we go out and it'd be, going through a sod about up into the mountains, up into the border, having tea with the border guys and stuff and trying to find out stuff. Um, Rob Ryan was our, um, ACO commuter right, yeah. who he's, yeah, yeah. he's, he's awesome. <laughs> he's a great guy. Yeah. Awesome guy. <laughs> oh yeah. He didn't care. Like he literally pushed the envelope of what we could do. I mean, but it was the, the right thing, you know, he didn't, sure. he wasn't like a politician, even though right. I think he's, I think his family's in politics, but, um, yeah, he he definitely was a great leader and stuff like that. I know oh, he was yeah. you guys is up there in R D and stuff like that when he came up there and stuff. So Yep, yep. Um yeah, so I got to, you know, really get to know him a lot. Ripito, uh Russ, um, that was our first deployment together. And we had a we had a ball. I always he got he it was getting a shot. I think it was a penicillin shot because he was sick. And he's he was petrified of, of shots. Um, and I'll get into who Ripito is after, you know, later on, but so the doc gave him a shot and he jumped up and down the needle was like, and his butt, like just flopping up and, and I couldn't stop <laughs> laughing. He's like, shut up, Otter, shut up. I just couldn't <laughs> stop laughing. He, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> it was just like, dude, you're, you're like this hardcore dude and you're like crying like a baby with a needle hanging out of your ass. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's just one of the stories I have about him. So, uh. Yeah, I got to know him really well. Um, he was a great guy. And then, you know, of course, Dean was there and stuff, too. So, um, yeah, yeah. so that was pretty much the thought about. We were there. We It was a very busy time um, for us while we were there. And uh, it was it, it. You felt like you were doing something, you know. Sure. So and then, uh, yeah, we um, got back from that and we started doing train up for Iraq. Um, we did a lot of uh, we did a couple um, equipment jumps up at Bragg to, you know, take down an airfield and all that, because our mission was to, um, go in and take bad dag international. Um, it, I think it was all, I think almost two and a half battalions of us were going to go and do that. Um, yeah, yeah. we were actually, um, I was in, um, PSAB and that's where we were launching from and we we're loading the plane to go. Like I was walking on the tarmac and they canceled it um, because they said the fighter pilots are coming back saying it was just that we wouldn't make it because there was so much AAA that 
it, we just oh really we wouldn't make it either. like you wouldn't even be able to jump you, you wouldn't even, yeah, the planes wouldn't have made it yeah it'd be almost like world war ii and d-day or something like that where they're all getting oh, man. so that, and that's what they're saying they're like it's there's too much you guys won't make it in we're gonna scrap it that's what at least what we were told and so the, it started happening and we're like are we gonna go in or we, what are we gonna do so then <laughs> we got our uh, the follow-on mission to go in and um secure h1 airfield so we did a 500 foot combat jump into that um which was we didn't have a reserve on because there's no reason to after <laughs> if it doesn't yeah, open it's not gonna work anyway <laughs> yeah if it doesn't open you're bouncing so right. um so that did that I, I got knocked out on a on a building like that's the only time i ever got injured or anything in in the military um i literally got knocked out and i woke up and um i can't remember the doc's name but he's he's a short little stocky guy you probably know who i'm talking about um, Miller was it, Doc Miller? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he came up and said, yeah. like, oh, "Are you fucking dead?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> no, I think I'm good." But my back had a black and blue mark across it. From oh my god! Uh, lane. Yeah, and I, that was. I woke up. I'm like, "Oh shit, what happened?" Um, so you hitting this the side of it, or it was just on? It, no, it was like a crumbled out piece of building, and stuff like that, because the building's the outline of it, and I was just yeah, landed yeah. on. Like I was trying to get away from the um land from the runway just because that's you know uh, that's a freaking painful landing yeah. but at least trying to land in the dirt and but i landed on the right. building and stuff and got knocked out oh my god so that was just, it was just it was kind of funny um yeah and then we were there for probably four or five days and then we then um aaron's platoon uh, Bordeaux's, we got and then captain ryan went with us to go do interdiction along the highway going up from Haditha up to Syria. So okay. we did, we were out there doing vehicle interdiction, um, calling in airstrikes on vehicles. Uh, it was very lucrative <laughs> target rich environment. And uh, <clears throat> we did, um, so we were out there for, let's see, is April 3rd, me and Ripito, he, Captain Ripito was sitting, he's the fire support officer of, um, of the uh, company and we're sitting there talking about, cause he, that was, this was his last deployment and he was getting out after this. Cause he was, um, you know, he's just, he was going to go on and do other stuff. And we we're just talking about that. Like what, what's he going to do and, you know, and everything. And, you know, just small talk on sitting next to this berm. And then we come back and we're supposed to actually link up with Sean O'Neill's recce team. Um, mm -hmm. and they, cause they were like, probably like maybe two to 300 yards or uh, meters in front of us, um, like watching the road. And so we were coming back and I can't remember what time of night it was. This car pulls up and this lady gets out and she's like screaming, they killed my mother, killed my father. I need water. And so me being pretty high, I'm like, well, let's go up there and find out what's going on. Um, so we were walking up as me, Rip, Long and Levade. And I, at the last moment, for some reason, I'm like, I'm going to turn around and get my, my go bag ready. Cause you know, for the, cause we're leaving early in the morning. I'm like, so I'm like, you guys got this. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we got it. And as I turn back around, I look like back at the car and I see a dude sitting back there that we didn't see before. And I'm like, Oh shit. And that's when it, the car bomb went off and I got blown like 10 feet through the air with a, this, the hood of the car was next to me. And it was just utter chaos because it opened up a ambush. So we were in the oh firefight as soon as that happened. And I crawled around the vehicle. Um, Captain Ryan was there. I'm like, Rip's up there. We need to go get him. He's like, we got guys going up there now. Um, oh, who was the first sergeant at ACO? Um, I can't remember his name. But he was the only reason he lived because he was laying underneath the vehicle of one of the Humvees. He was laying underneath it oh just kind of resting. And so that uh, initiated a firefight. And uh, I called in the medevac. Um, actually, I talked to Nick on the way in, and he was asked, you know, because they were worried that, you know, I think him and Brandy, we, I mean, from the, from what I heard, and I have a really kind of cool story I'll tell you about after this is um, the explosion could 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 be seen like 100 miles away. Like the eight, one of the A10 pilots said they saw it. It was like 100 miles away. They're like, there's no way, oh no way he survived that. <clears throat> so, so they probably thought the worst that you all were taken out. With yeah, or yeah, they did. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then, uh, wow. So Nick was coming in, and then I was like, nothing was going on, so everything kind of died down. And then all of a sudden, we used to start taking. I'm like, he's like, it is a, is it a cold LZ or is it a hot? I'm like, it's, it's fine, it's cold. You guys can come on in. And as soon as I said that, 
it just unleashed a, a massive firepower. And actually, one of the uh, the pilot of the 47 who came in and got Ripito and, and the guys um, who got hit, um, he actually flew the mission to go and get bin Laden too. He actually wrote an article oh. of that was one of the worst any time in his career that he took fire. Um, oh, coming into your HLZ. Yeah, coming into it. It was like wow. stuff coming through and everything. And the bullets are coming. He's like, it, there's an article of it, how he said that's one of the hairiest things that in for him to come into. And I, I told him, like, don't land. Your guys are not going to, you know, you're going to take massive fire and stuff. And he said, I'm coming in. And they came in. I met Nick and said hi and he's like glad you're alive i'm like yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> and uh so they had that, that then they took off um and then we kind of so you had the casualties on yeah i got the casualties you, on yeah. and we all stayed down there and stuff so we lost three of our guys um and another the other blocking musician came down and collapsed onto us and then everything kind of just died down after that and then we kind of pulled back to a different location of course and uh yeah. No, to say no one else slept that night. We were just kind of oh, like, what, God, yeah. what just happened? Um, and then we linked up with Sean the next day. I think it was the next day or the, the day after. It, it was right when Q's happened. I'm not sure his, if his happened the 4th or 5th of April when Q got hit. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, but it was like shortly after that. Wow. And... All I all we heard was one of the recce teams got hit and Air Force guys dead. And I knew the recce team and me and Sean, I'm like, and, and there, we didn't know that Sathers was with him. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and Sean's like, you, you, Q's dead. I'm like, I, and I told you, I'm like, I don't know what it is, but something's telling me he's not dead. Like something yeah. telling me, tell, is telling me he is not, he wasn't, he's not dead. Um, yeah. And then come to find out it was, you know, yeah, Sathers and stuff instead of Q, but then Q got hurt, and what he did there was just freaking heroic. Oh, um, phenomenal! Yeah, yeah. So just amazing. Yeah, I was just happy. Yeah, and I don't want and I I don't want people to think that we are being callous about Sather. I mean, that was a horrible loss. Horrible. And, no, you know, horrible. He was a good guy, but yeah. but when we didn't know him, right. we knew Q. Yeah. And when and that was that that went out for every everybody kind of heard about you know an RD JTAC got killed and or an Air Force guy got killed and we're like. It hit us all. I mean, it was pretty devastating yeah. for us all until we found out. But yeah, we don't. I don't want to take away. From no, you, absolutely sure. not. And I don't. And I, I didn't think you were. Right. I just wanted people to to understand that we're not. That's we're not doing that. Yeah, no. But no, with just, Q, we knew he was our buddy, and yeah. you know, it was very harrowing. So yeah, was, you know, yeah, exactly what you said is like definitely. I mean, that's horrible what happened, and no one, you know, anyone to die, whoever it is, and it just like you said, it made sure. it hit home more for us, just because of the relationship we had with Q and stuff. And, sure. Sure. Um, and then that happened. <clears throat> Come to find out, and Q was fine, so that was cool. And then April six, um, we we're engaging a tank battalion. <laughs> we're just calling an air. Oh, really? It was a very <laughs> it's ambitious. At this time, um, Dean came out. Um, he came out to replace Rip, and then okay. also Joy Trent Joy came out when he was he, another right. great guy. Yeah, I remember great when American. we gave him his check ride out and. Uh, I think it was Nevada, and we're like chucking rocks at him. Like, yeah, you're taking fire. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, they came out to uh, help me, and then um, so we're we're actually engaging a tank battalion, and this car was I did what I didn't see was coming behind. It was weaving in and out of out of cars that were we we have already blown up, and I had no idea that there it was coming. And so I was talking to the uh, A-10 pilot and he's like, Hey, you have a car coming behind you um, at a high rate of speed. I'm like, okay, well keep me in, you know, keep me posted. And next thing I knew, like a minute later as I heard his, at him firing his guns oh. and he blew up the car and the car secondary explosions went up and blew up. It was another car bomb that was coming towards our position. And Man. I, I, I didn't know it for, I'm like, what the hell did you, I, I literally on the, on the I'm like, what the hell did you just do? Like you dropped it off clearance. Like, and he's like, no, it just, it didn't look right. And, and that's when the secondary, I'm like, Oh, shit. so we went down there and it was a car bomb. And I always said, so he kind of say, he could probably save some more lives by doing that. Oh, he saved. Yeah. All, yeah. It, him and come to find out. So this is kind of really kind of a cool story that, um, I always said, I want to thank him. You know, you know, you'd never get to see the pilots that we talked to and stuff and everything. And, and the 118th and the 131st were 
pretty much attached to us out there um, mm-hmm. that and we're there on call all the time. So that's who we talk to all the time. Like Brandy was talking to them up at the dam, Nick, Tommy Case. Um, so we talk to him like every day, but we never, you know, you heard the call sign, but you recognize the voice, but you never put a, you know, a call sign to the face. Sure. So I was, um, this is probably five years ago. I was talking to one of my friends and she was, um, her husband was an A-10 mechanic. And I was just telling her that, you know, we were just talking about the military. And I, was, and I told her that story. And he goes, I think I might be able to, you know, find out who that, you know, at least a squadron was. And I'm like, okay, well, whatever. And uh, yeah. about two months later, I get a text from Jamie, who the name, she's like, hey, this guy named Biggs is going to be texting you. And he thinks he knows the pilot that you're talking about. Um I'm like, okay, that's cool. So I talked to him. He was actually at the 130, 131st, and he was like one of the mission planner guys, um, one of the head guys, and he's a pilot too. And he's like, hey, I think I know the guy you're talking about, and his call sign was Gator. Um, and so he found the footage of that. Oh, like that from the HUD? From the HUD, from his wingman. Oh. And with me talking to him to, on the uh, radio and stuff, and him coming in and strafing this car like and it was like i guess it was famous in their two squadrons because you never it was like you could and when they blowing stuff up it was like it was just how it was the car was going like this and he was just like coming in and you can see the hud footage and him just blowing the shit out of this car and i'm like holy shit that's cool so he he's like i'm gonna have the guy call you and um so we talked i got to talk to him on uh, gator I, I don't even know their real names like i know yeah. <laughs> so, um i got to talk to him on the on the phone like three years ago and this past january um big text me he's like hey because he's an american airline pilot he's like hey i'm i'm staying i'm I have a layover in cincinnati would you like to have you know coffee and breakfast um in the morning on sunday morning i'm like yeah absolutely so he went up there and uh had breakfast and talked like it was like i knew the guy forever and he's like hey we're having a reunion on the 24th of march of a 20-year reunion of haditha of all we're just being deployed over there um sure do you would you want to come if the guys are okay with it i'm like yeah i would love to come up there and, and meet everyone and stuff so he's like well let me check with the guys because you know it's their their thing so he t- yeah it's like 18 guys only yeah so yeah. to be invited to that is man pretty pretty prestigious it was it was cool it was uh he so he texts me back and goes hey they they want you they everyone wants you to come so me and laura flew up there and um <clears throat> we got to meet all the guys and i got to meet gator i got to meet the guys who talked like to brandy and um case and nick and it was surreal like they yeah and they were like the most humble it was a very humbling experience just being there but they're the most humble like gracious like come to find out like a lot of times they would when they've been going on fuel which means they're out of fuel if they don't get back to base they have enough fuel to get back to where they're going they would stay way beyond that and they would climb the altitude coast as far as like so they could get back to base but they would stay on station as long as they could until another two ship um came on and I remember them. that community is just amazing. Yeah. I mean, every, I've never met a guy in that community where I've been like, ah, oh, he's kind of a jerk. They're, they're like you said, they're always down to earth. They're all, they always want to get after it. They're always there to help. They're, I mean, they're just, yeah. just an amazing group of folks, man, for sure. And they they even said like, we felt like we are your guardian angels. I'm like, well, that's what you guys were. I mean, I know the guys for in the sure. dam would love to talk to you guys and stuff. So they actually gave me some footage of the dam of them calling it. I can hear Brandenburg. I can hear Case. And oh, I can hear man, it's so cool. Yeah, so I got, they gave me a thumb drive of that. So uh, um, it's all declassified, but um, yeah, yeah. It, it's, you can, you know, you can hear Brandy on it like, yeah. <laughs> when it was, oh, so I'd love, it. It oh, love to hear that, yeah, man. It was very, That's so cool. Yeah, now I'll, I'll, I'll send you some. Um, it, it was very interesting. It was very just surreal being there. And then I didn't, I was sitting there doing shots with, um, with a guy and stuff like that. I'm like, Hey, what's going on? You know, you know, I am, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some things never change. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, what are you doing now? He's like, Oh, I just retired. I'm like, Oh, that's fucking cool. And he goes, I'm like, Oh, and he's like, yeah, I, um, I'm a three-star general. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> you're like, cool, man. My brother. Yeah, I, never, yeah, okay. I never thought I'd be doing shots of Blanton with a three-star general, but that's cool. <laughs> so, right. 
but yeah, yeah. So it was. But that's a testament to those guys. I mean, he he what didn't you know he didn't feel the need to you know act that way. No, no. He's, he's just a cool dude. Yeah, they're I mean, all they're just... very. They uh, they wanted to hear stories too. Like, what was it like being down there? And I'm like, I I'll tell you what it's like for me where I was at. But you know, the guys I know the guys on the dam. Like every time you guys checked in, they were like they loved it. it was just like you guys were they're guardian angels up there and stuff and it's almost like a, a relief that oh thank god they're here yeah. you know like I, I can't i always say i can't imagine what brandy and tommy were going through on the dam i mean that just seems unfathomable to be just like kind of constantly shelled and who knew what was going to happen at the end of it i mean yeah. they could have you know there was a such an overwhelming enemy force oh man yeah yeah they did they did an amazing job and they deserve everything they got and stuff and um for sure i was we were trying to help alleviate guys coming in. That was one of the tank battalions that we engaged because they were coming to the Aditha and we, we were just trying yeah. to help them out as much as we could with our little band of. <laughs> well, that's another thing. I mean, you, uh, yeah, I don't mean to take away from you. I mean, you guys, uh, you, you, would you have a platoon or a company? No, I'll, no, I'll there was, a, it was just over a section. So we didn't have a full okay. platoon. So you had a section of guys taking on a tank battalion yeah. of light, you know, airborne infantry, yeah. ranger, you know, rangers. Which is not always we did, we always did work out the secure, best. We did procure a um, ZPU um, two, I think it was, or maybe it was, I don't know. But so we had that towing t- behind one of the Humvees and stuff. We <laughs> we figured out how to do it by accident. Like, oh, you somebody pressed their foot on the thing. It's like duh, 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 duh. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> so that was. Did you guys use it against the oh, the bad guys? Oh yeah, we use it against vehicles and everything. <laughs> so was, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, it's so yeah, awesome. It was cool. It was cool. <laughs> so we had that towing around the behind us on the uh, on a Humvee and stuff. So. <laughs> Oh, I love it. But uh, we, yeah, it was, it was it was interesting. You pull over guys like we pulled over this like we shot in front of him. He stopped, um, and we opened his trunk, and it was just full of money, like just full of money. And I'm Jeez. like, oh Jesus, that's very tempting. But we, you know, it was, right. It, like, let me just take a look. At <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> but it was just, uh, and then some people wouldn't stop. So, and then you had to, you know, do what you had to do and stuff. The funniest yeah. thing was. I, it, it turned out to be really funny. This um, truck was coming down and it just wouldn't stop. So they hit it with a, uh, oh, they hit it with a Gustav, Carl Gustav. And it came right, right. on its side. And you see this guy climbing out. And I'm like, what the hell? So we're like sitting there and like, well, let's see if he has any guns or anything like that. So he jumps out, reaches in. I'm like, oh, he's reaching in for something. And he pulls out this hookah pipe and he just starts taking off through the through the desert with this hookah <laughs> pipe fly, flying around everywhere. I'm like, that's something you don't see every day. <laughs> so, that was a priority for him at the time. Yeah. He's like, let me get my hookah yeah. and get out. Yeah, that was just it, this guy running through the desert with a hookah pipe underneath his arm. The, the things are going everywhere. <laughs> Was he even a bad guy? I don't know. Yeah. Anything well, that's, that's what I've always was supposed to be not. They, they, it was bath party members and stuff in there. Right, right, right. In right. Syria, and they weren't supposed to. They're told not to be on that. So, you know, now if we did capture one, we'd have. Um, it was second platoon would come out and pick the prisoners up and take them back to H one and stuff. So, okay, yeah, they would come out and they they would resupply us and everything too. So yeah, that was uh, interesting. Uh, interesting. About a month we did that. We we're out there. Yeah. So, and then we came back and flew back on a commercial. They landed there at H one airfield, which is kind of weird. Uh, a commercial yeah. airliner landing <laughs> in a combat zone. Um, right. So, and I got to fly. Uh, I finagled my way up to first class. <laughs> so was, nice. Nice. That was one of the first and only times I ever flew first class was out of Iraq, which is kind of ironic. <laughs> so, that is. So and then we got to meet every, we met up with everyone too, um, which was that I'm, I'm, you've seen that picture of all of us in the front of the Saddam's and stuff like that. Yeah. It's a great picture. Yeah. So it was good to see everyone. Cause as you know, when we deploy, we usually don't see each other that much. Um, right. It was, uh, so it was good to, be back with everyone and, and see them and talk to them and stuff. Like that. Yeah. Everybody's in that, man. Even like guys, like, um, like some SF, uh, tag P guys mm-hmm. were in that. I think Bickle was in yeah, there. Bickle, I want to say, but yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They were augment T guys um, that came over and, and helped us and stuff like that. And, Cause we were just, yeah. we were so thin. There wasn't enough of us. They were great. Yeah. The one, the one glaring thing I noticed about that picture is that I was not in it because I was sitting in Afghanistan <laughs> during all that time. And we're just like twiddling our thumbs and, Nothing was going on, and we're just like kind of like getting sit reps and listening to the radio, and it's uh, 
Yeah. You, was, you uh, and Q were the ones he said, he even said, he was like, yeah, that happens. Not a cool picture. I'm not in it either. <laughs> so it's like, Oh, Q's not in that either. Well, oh, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Cause he was just, he was on his way back to the States. Yeah. 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 From getting blown up. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That was a, I think that's still hanging in the, uh, I think I, I was talking to Minion and stuff and he said he was, it's still hanging up in there. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good so one. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we, uh, flew, uh, something early May we flew back back to Benning so and then we and then uh what year was that was that uh still 03 yeah 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 okay. because we went over was the end of February beginning of March of 03 and then we went in I want to say March 19th so okay so then you got back and then then what happened so we did we took some took some time took some time off uh, I just needed to just because it was uh sure. something you don't I know Brandenburg and all them too and stuff, but when you, oh, when you see God, your buddy, I can't imagine what you get. like blown up three of them that you were just talking. And Lividay was actually supposed to come over and put speakers in my house because we talked about doing. Oh, really? That. Yeah, yeah. And he was another. We just uh, just a lot of good guys at Aco and stuff like that, as you know. I remember Lividay from when he was a like a PFC. Yeah. I mean, when I first got to Aco, he was a PFC, and and when I heard, yeah, that was hearing names that you used to serve with, and then mm-hmm. you know you that's it's. It's hard. Yeah. It is hard. Yep. And especially, I'm sure for you for being there. And yeah, I mean, it just sucks. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It, it, it was, you know, we, so we took some time. We did, um, I got to do the flyover um, at third ranger battalion for rip and them, the, the, the ceremony they had there. So I was, I got to control the flyover to, to do that. Oh, I was like nervous. I'm like, all right, so what's the, what's the time hack to make sure they fly at the right time and everything. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to mess that no, up. No, I got to uh, meet Ripito's uh, mom and dad. Um, so uh, he actually, his dad had a picture of me and Rip in a Sadabad and I never wore a helmet. Um, <laughs> never. I was, I was that kind of, I always, uh, I was always like that guy. And as you probably remember, like yeah, yeah. always pushing the envelope <laughs> on stuff. Sure, um, sure. Actually, me and Brandenburg got in an argument over the radio about where he's like, <laughs> I'm like, I got my skateboard helmet on. He's like, you need to have a helmet. I'm like, I don't need a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> so I, what little hair Brandenburg had left, man, like supervising me, it got pulled out when he was supervising me. I, <laughs> right, right. I told him, that, I'm like, I am so sorry how I acted. Like, he's like, God damn it. Wow. <laughs> it just, um, but that's just, that was me. So I, but the, my point was when, um, had a picture of rip and he had his helmet on stuff. I had a baseball hat and I got to meet his parents, which was really nice. And, uh, yeah. talked to them and, um, you know, it just, yeah, it's horrible when you see that, you know, his, his dad and mom, um, but they were in good spirits cause it was a little bit after the, their funeral or some of that, but it was nice to be able to meet them and, yeah. and talk to them. Hey!